Lead Time is a podcast of the Unite Leadership Collective, hosted by Tim Allman and Jack Kalliberg. Lead Time taps into biblical wisdom for practical solutions to today's burning issues. Each podcast confronts real-time struggles facing the local church in a post-Christian culture. Step into the action with the ULC at uniteleadership.org. This is Lead Time. Welcome to Lead Time. Uh, Tim Allman here. Uh, Jack Kalberg is actually not with me today. Uh, he is spending time with family, and it's an honor for me to talk about Jack today, actually, and why you, pastor, leader, need an executive director on your team. So since it's just me and you, I'm going to try to keep the dad jokes to a minimum. You're welcome. Yep, yep. Try to keep those to a minimum. Yep. People are cheering. And very few people will be will be laughing, uh, but maybe maybe you will. So anyway, it's a great day to be alive here at the uh, lead time, where we want to get super super practical, super super practical in what uh, the church needs to move forward in the the 21st century in 2022 and beyond. A few opening comments before I get into these five reasons why you need an executive uh, director. Um, is hiring is difficult. So if you're looking for this role within your church, be very, very deliberate and slow. Make sure they are a fit. I would highly uh, recommend that you check out Ramsey. Ramsey Solutions has a, a recent blog on the 12 habits of organizations that hire well. And I especially like how much they spend time talking about finances and um, making sure, especially with a marriage, like the employee is a really good fit. So this is not a role that you want to hire flippantly or lightly, but reverently and deliberately in accordance for the purposes for which it was created by God. I'm doing a lot of weddings recently. Anyway, uh, too often pastors think that their next hire should actually be a pastor. I've heard this numerous times. We need another pastor or maybe even a DCE, a director of Christian education. I'm telling you before you make your next hire, if you do not have an executive uh, director, this is the role you need. And I believe truly that this role, especially for those of us within the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, should be a trained and called role in the non-denom world. Uh, Jack Kalberg's role as an executive director is called an executive pastor. I don't know if this role should ever move toward ordination, um, but it definitely should be a recognized and called role within uh, the church. And we should be training them because Jack doesn't, Jack doesn't see himself as just one who's concerned with finance and operations. Um, executive directors should be trained theologically. They're helping make strategic decisions that shape the vision of the congregation, and they should be trained. And that's why Unite Leadership has a partnership with Luther House of Study, specifically the Reformation class, giving uh, all of our students this deep understanding of law and gospel and the tension and paradox-filled uh, theologies, doctrines of, of our faith. This is very, very helpful. So let's get into the five reasons every church needs an executive director. The first one is probably kind of a, a, a duh um, I've heard of pastors like working with budgets and and making you know uh, making proposals on <laughs> on budgets. I don't do a lot of that. I make uh, vision and and hiring and culture calls, but as it relates to the nuts and bolts of finances. I wasn't trained to do that. You, pastor, were not trained to strategically handle your finances. You were trained to exegete and apply God's word through a law gospel framework, yet many pastors leave seminary. This is kind of the bonkers thing that I've always rough, wrestled with. You could be a 26, maybe 30-year-old young young leader, and you are put in charge of a maybe 500,000 to a $1.5 million organization as the, the kind of senior leader. You definitely need an executive director to come alongside you. You need someone that can hear the vision of the congregation and work toward putting together a financial plan to strategically execute it. Second point, uh, and executive directors are definitely needed, is pastors were not trained to understand uh, strategic communication systems. I don't remember that class at the seminary, uh, putting together a strategic communication plan. Uh, pastors should strive to make their ministry as simple and accessible for all as possible. Unfortunately, uh, most pastors just say no or yes with no rubric for decision-making. 
They don't realize that every decision is part of a larger system and one in which their job is to lead people towards spiritual maturity through wise choices and clear, clear instruction. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Apostle Paul is talking about we need to be wise and, and deliberate and really clear in our communications. To communicate clearly is to be very, very kind. And a lot of times pastors do not have the training to strategically communicate, to even even cast vision. I think a lot of our executive directors uh, think of a number of our older leaders. They've uh, they have some experience in corporate America, and they even understand how to clearly and strategically cast vision for the congregation. So uh, a lot of pastors don't have even the the vision gift. Uh, an executive director could help help you toward that end. Um, a lot of times, uh, point number three, uh, pastors do not execute. A lot of times we focus on uh, maybe the vision. And we've got all these ideas. You hear of pastors going to the conference and then having the, the flavor of the month. Oh, here he comes with a, a new idea. Um, what's it going to be this time? We need to we need to revamp all of Kid Bend because it's going to do X, Y, and Z. I don't know what it exactly is, but um, we don't execute and, and kind of stay the course toward a strategic plan. For instance, right now at Christ Greenfield, our like huge, wildly important goal, our WIG, is is developing more um, leaders and coaches and then directors. So monitoring our leadership development pathway. I didn't learn any of that at, at the seminary. So point number three, pastors were not trained to execute with excellence. Um, granted, some pastors have both visionary and execution oriented gifts, but here's been my experience, far too few do. Many pastors simply wanna preach and teach and shepherd God's people. That's a beautiful thing. I think if you've listened to me for any uh, length of time, you could think that we disparage the role of, of shepherd, of, of caretaker, of those of someone who comes alongside and cares for, loves the sheep, who marries and, and buries and baptizes, all those things that a good pastor does. We do not disparage that at all. Um, we simply say the role of the pastor and the expectation of a pastor is there's no way uh, one man can do all the things that are expected of that of that office. And so, again, this is why an executive director, one of the roles of an executive director, you could look at Scripture. You're like, where is this in, in Scripture? Someone who helps to execute um, or wait on tables. The early church had a big problem, Acts chapter 6. We don't want to give up time, uh, spending time in the Word and proclaiming the Word. And so they they called the first deacons. Really, if you, if you want to put a title around uh, an executive director, one who handles strategic communication, um, finance, and systems, uh, you, you could call them deacons. We don't really have this role in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod right now, but there is definitely a biblical understanding of this role. And oh, by the way, uh, Stephen, I always think this is funny, the first martyr is a deacon. So don't put, I think, a lot of roles in, in too tight of a box. I'm the word person. I'm the pastor and the executive director. You don't talk about <laughs> Jesus much. You just look at the books and, and, uh, make sure we're, we're, we're doing well. Like that's, that's a small little box that should not be for the church. The fourth point, um, of why we should have executive directors, especially within the Lutheran church, Missouri Synod. And I would say as a called and trained role, pastors were not trained to be entrepreneurs and to understand uh, scale. These are business terms, and I did not have a scaling of the ministry class at the seminary. Uh, your pastor may be a ministry starter um, for all the reasons kind of listed ab above in our conversation, but innovation for the sake of the lost is needed now more than ever. This is honestly the Wild West of the church, especially as it relates to leadership, and new skills are needed. Uh, but your pastor may not have all of these all of these skills. I know of many pastors who hired their first executive director when the demands of running the organization, doing the administration, was stealing their focus on the people Jesus led them to disciple, love, and care for, sit with, and grieve with. And this hire changed their ministry. And and I've I've talked to some who are in the boomer generation who who made this decision. My dad, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my dad, Pastor Dave Allman, recently retired, loving a new season of, of life, uh, but he didn't get uh, his jack um, until about three, four years ago. 
And I remember him saying, I don't know why it took me this long to hire this, this position. The fifth reason that pastors need an executive director, churches need an executive director is pastors were not trained to build a team around their gaps. Your pastor must grow adept at saying what he does, and I hope he grows adept at saying what he doesn't do. They must then go one step further and recognize that some of what they don't do must still be done to advance the gospel. This is the role of the executive director. So I'm going to just give some kudos to Jack here. Here's what our executive director at Christ Greenfield has done for our ministry. Uh, Jack has brought leadership development expertise without having to micromanage people. Jack helps cast vision for how he would like things done, yet still allows the staff uh, freedom, his team freedom to execute those, those tasks. As the ministry has grown, Jack's um, operational team, central operations team from communications to, to finance to systems and structures, HR, all of that, his team has definitely grown and his leadership has, has grown into not man micromanaging, but releasing people. Jack knows how important it is for everyone involved in ministry, not just a pastor, to also grow in their understanding of what God wants each person on staff doing each day so that it can collectively, we can collectively fulfill our mission to multiply disciples. Jack views himself, even though he's largely in the finance and, and operations, he views himself as a disciple multiplier. Now, we already know your excuse right now. If you're still listening, I hope you are. This is just a short little teaser today. We know your excuse about hiring an executive director. I don't have the money right now to hire anyone else on, on our team. Um, who really said anything about, about using money? You can hire people. I think this is one of the misnomers. Had a conversation with Bill Woolsey the other day. Too often we treat people um, that we hire uh, remarkably different than our serve team members. We don't use the term volunteer really around Christ Greenfield too much because it's not in the Bible, but our, our serve team. Or if someone's growing as a leader and into, into a coach, we should be treating them very much the same as those who are on, on the payroll, um, holding them accountable, having good conversations about their family and, and their commitments, their, their goals. So you do not need to necessarily pay this leader. I, we are having a huge boomer boom right now, uh, a boomer boom, yes, in, in the American church of many men and women. And again, this can be a role, a high-level executive leader could be a female leader from within your congregation to compliment you, uh, Pastor. We have a lot of them sitting there saying, I don't know exactly what my role is within the church. And maybe you could cast a vision as you get to know a handful of them to say, hey, could you come and, and help more with strategic finance and operations here at, at the church and be transparent right up front? Maybe it's part time. Maybe you don't have anything. But as the ministry grows, because they will definitely help your ministry grow. Um, you say in time, maybe it could be a, a, a part time position to a full time position. But could you just come alongside even just a couple days a week? Come and, and sit with me and, and get underneath the hood, if you will. Um, so two words of caution as I'm closing here. Don't just hire any former executive. Church culture and, and the ministry of the church is radically different. And um, there may be some who have led in corporate America that, you know, they were they were chopping block, you know, that they were running over people in, in corporate America and the church loves people and treats people differently. So you need to take your time to get to know the heart and the character of that uh, potential executive director within your community. And then second, find someone who loves uh, Lutheran theology. They should view themselves as, as a minister of, of the gospel. This is an amazing, amazing time right now, I think, for you, Pastor, uh, to think differently about how you lead. Uh, you should not give up the preaching of the word. Word and sacrament is very, very important. But again, the days are very different. Um, if you as a church leader are not strategically engaging one another, using technology, um, Having, having a conscious conversation about the brand of your congregation. And all brand is, is what are people saying about us, me, the, the church, when we're not in the room? 
if you don't have someone running consistent net promoter scores, uh, because your greatest advocates as your church continues to, to grow is the people you have receiving word and sacrament consistently, uh, all the systems and structures, I could go through a laundry list of what our operations team does behind the scenes, uh, strategically executing our vision. Um, but that'd be boring. I don't think you, you want to, you want to hear that. So I'm not going to do that right now, but there are so many systems that are set up within the Christ Greenfield family of ministries that our executive director, Jack Kalberg helps over oversee. Um, he is an overseer of, of the word and, and watching people move. And we, this is what we, we watch a lot at Christ Greenfield, the movement of God's people. Um, what is their next step? And there are so many systems that get overseen then by our executive director, Jack Kalberg. So you, pastor, you need a Jack. And if Unite Leadership can help you in any way, uh, explore getting training uh, for your potential executive director, even current executive director, please let us know. Just go to uniteleadership.org. Sharing is caring. Thanks so much for joining us today on this short episode of Lead Time, Five Reasons Why You, Pastor, Need an Executive Director. We'll see you next week on Lead Time. Peace. You've been listening to Lead Time, a podcast of the Unite Leadership Collective. The ULC consults and brings together cohorts of congregations to build the culture, systems, and structures of intentional discipleship multiplication. To go deeper with us, create a free login on uniteleadership.org for access to exclusive materials and resources. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for next week's episode.